Okay, good afternoon class. Today we're going to do our lab for eddy current inspection. And the first thing to realize, remember we've talked about the eddy current instrumentation, which is primarily a Wheatstone bridge, which is shown here. We have four resistors or inductors, depending on what the uh, design is. We have two legs where current can flow, so current can flow this way and current can flow this way. And if they cancel each other out by having these two uh, components equal themselves, then we can make this zero current or zero voltage. If they have uh, non, if they're not balanced or not equal, then they are not zero voltage. So the first thing we're to do is just remember what is inside a coil and an eddy current coil looks like this we have a induction coil which is close to the conductor surface and a pickup coil which is behind the induction coil and as we bring this coil closer to the conductor then that induction causes eddy currents in the part and then those eddy currents generate eddy currents back in the probe which can be picked up by the pickup probe and just for your information this is what a probe looks like and this is about an eighth, eighth of an inch or a tenth of an inch in diameter so it's very small but there are several coils in there and we'll be using this later on and getting back to the Wheatstone Bridge that instrumentation is in this this uh, instrument and let me just uh, quickly show you an example of something so if I do something with this instrument you saw the line go that way and I can hit I can hit this uh, I can push the button that says null and you'll notice this line goes to zero and when I hit or put the eddy current probe on something another conductor it has that uh, process where because of the voltage different it sends a signal down to a certain area and direction and this is a uh, oscilloscope with a 2D field so there's field in this direction and field in this direction so uh, let me show you again I'm going to put a different material in there so we have this material which is a iron material which we'll go into in a few minutes and then we have something a little bit different like an aluminum material and you'll notice it goes in a different direction so that means that the actual impedance in that is different and so we're seeing how that can affect the electrical signal generated by the Wheatstone Bridge. So I'm going to null this again. And now we're going to use this as a way to sort materials. Okay. So again we have our eddy current probe on a conductor and if it's nulled like it is here where we have a point in the middle and if we put it on something that's got a very a different uh, conductivity in it then we get a signal and we're going to make use of that to do material sorting in other words we want to be able to uh, detect different types of materials <coughs> so the most important thing about eddy current is to have a calibration standard and that means that we have to have a standard of material we have to have some materials that we have some way other than eddy current of validating what they are. So here's ferrite which is an iron material. Here's a different iron uh, material. I think that's stainless steel. Here's copper nickel. Here's manganese. Here's aluminum T6 and aluminum 7075. So these have different these two materials have different properties and so as I mentioned to you in a class a number of weeks ago 
we actually were asked to go to look at a manufacturer's material to verify they had the right material because a heat treat affects the conductivity and if it did not have the right heat treat even though it looks like aluminum it would not be uh, appropriately uh, have the appropriate strength okay so first of all we're going to set up the procedure and if you look at our lab procedure which I sent you in the uh, which is on the uh, blackboard we have a process here that uh, tells us how to put everything in so somebody's developed this procedure already and I'm going to use it to demonstrate the ability to sort material so the first thing I do is to have a probe which is the 100 kilohertz probe 100 to 500 kilohertz probe that's the frequency then we go in and we enter the frequency in the inspection instrument and we set that to 50 so you'll see I can move that and it changes so I want that set to 50 and then it asks me to uh, work on the phase angle and here's the phase angle and it says I should set that at 153 so you can see I can vary that to whatever and so I want to set that at 153 and then it goes to gain horizontal gain again they want that to be 53 so I'm going to rotate this knob until it gets to be 53 and similarly I've done the vertical gain okay and so now we're ready to do our testing and the first thing I want to do is null this, okay? And I want to null this uh, based upon the fact that if I go back to this Wheatstone Bridge, I want to fix this probe, which is here, and I want to balance that in the air so that when I put this on a material, it's going to make a voltage flow in this Wheatstone circuit. So if I do this in the air and I null it or zero it, then this is all balanced so that if I get something different in there, uh, this, uh, this says test sample here, and it affects the balance of that, I will be able to figure that out. Okay, so we're going to look at these uh, six calibrated samples, and what happens is the first time we put it on a uh, ferrite, you can see that it goes down that way, okay? If I put it on stainless steel 304, it goes the other way, a little bit further this way. Then I'll put it on copper nickel and it goes more to the 9 o'clock position. If I hit magnesium, it goes to the 10 o'clock position. If I look at 77, or excuse me, 70, 75 T6, it goes like the 11 o'clock. And if I look at the other 70, 75, it goes a little bit more to the 11 o'clock. So, for example, well, now we have calibrated samples. We've got my eddy current probe. And again, if I null an air, I balance that circuit. And so we can go back here and look at these materials again. But let's just say we're interested in knowing whether a material is 70, 75 or something different. So I've got this aluminum there and it should always have that uh, shape and that trajectory or phase angle if you want to call that a phase angle and if I come up and check something else like this I know that this is not 775 that's 775 okay so let's look at that and now I have a number of different samples okay that's aluminum <clears throat> and if I look at that that's sample C in our data set Okay, it looks like aluminum, so I'm going to take data on that. Okay, now, is that uh, aluminum 75T6 or 7075? So I'm going to go back over here, put it on the T6, and then I'm going to go to 7075. And you can see, it looks just like 7075. <clears throat> okay, so let's do that again. Okay. 
So most airplanes of interest probably use T6 because it has a different or better strength. So this is what I want to make sure my sample that I don't know about looks like. So I go to my unknown and you can see it doesn't look like that. It's much more similar to this which is a softer material. So I don't want to use this material for making my airplane. Okay, so that's uh, sample C and this is sample B. Okay. So here's sample B and to me this is heavy so it feels like a little bit of uh, steel. Okay, so okay, so that's going off to about three o'clock, uh, nine o'clock position. So we know it's not aluminum. There's aluminum 7075. There's T6. This is magnesium. Here's copper nickel. Here's stainless steel. So it's not stainless steel or copper nickel. Okay, so it's kind of in between there. And unfortunately, I don't have a real standard for uh, carbon steel. Hang on just a second. That's not carbon steel. So I probably ought to try to get a standard for carbon steel and see if that works if this is carbon steel. It feels like carbon steel, <coughs> but it has this uh, signature going over to the three o'clock, uh, excuse me, nine o'clock position. Okay, so um, that's sample B. So it's probably somewhere between magnesium and sta not stainless steel, it was it's copper nickel or something like that. Uh, it's not ferrite, that's way down there, so it's kind of a unique signature and I don't know exactly what it is but it's not any of these materials so if I were to ask is this material uh, you know one of these that we might want to use then we could have, we could discard this because it doesn't meet that requirement okay this is a washer and this is sample D and if I get data off of that okay that's interesting because that looks an awful lot like this okay so this might have a carbon ferrite steel material there's the washer unknown D and here's ferrite okay so it looks very similar to that it's certainly not stainless steel which is going the other direction and it's certainly not aluminum okay so this is a probably a ferrite steel which uh, is most likely a common inexpensive steel washer material okay okay all right here is uh, a uh, iron cobalt material which we use for magnetostrictive uh, guided waves and if I test that then again it looks really really similar to the iron cobalt uh, to the ferrite material so that's uh, ferromagnetic. That's probably ferromagnetic. These are probably not ferromagnetic. So this tells me I can certainly separate that material. Okay, so I'm going to null it one more time. And just for fun, I'm going to uh, look at some other materials. One might be, let's say, if I look at my ring, gold ring. Okay, it has a... Uh, pattern that goes off to about 10.30 or excuse me 9, 9.30 and again if I look at materials close there's copper nickel it's pretty close it's between magnesium and copper nickel but I presume this is not copper nickel uh, if, I, if it is I paid a lot of money for fairly inexperienced material okay it should be gold uh, but I don't have a gold standard. So what this is really showing is how important it is to have standards that you can use to test and compare. Okay. Now I'm going to get some other uh, test standards which we're going to use for crack detection. But let's first of all make sure we're happy with the material. So right now this looks like an aluminum piece so my question might be what type of aluminum is it okay 
and again we have 70 75 and we have 75 excuse me 70 75 T6 which is the material we probably want to use for building airplane wings okay so let's look at the brand uh, the unknown sample okay and it looks like 70 75 T6 okay Does everybody see that so let's know this again in air and here is the sample of non unknown here is 7075 T6 and it looks like that's it and if I go over to 7075 aluminum it's not the same so it's not that material so I've separated that now let me do one more thing here's another lock which we're going to test it feels heavier to me okay so here is this block and what we can tell right away is it looks more like ferrite containing steel carbon steel so here's ferrite here is stainless steel so it's not any of those there's copper nickel so it's almost it looks like ferrite type of uh, steel and that's exactly what it is okay before we go into doing crack detection I brought along a couple of uh, coins and to me it's kind of fun to see what's in a, a coin so here's something that looks like a, a penny and you might think it's basically copper and by the way I have a piece of copper here hang on have a piece of copper here somewhere there it is okay now this is uh, copper that we use for uh, plumbing so I think it's close to pure, pretty pure copper um, and I've flattened it so I can get my probe on it so you can see where it goes it goes up to about 11 o'clock and so let's see what this uh, penny is. We think this is this is copper, almost positive, 100% copper. So what is this? Okay, it's not copper exactly. All right, what is close to that? Okay, not stainless steel, not copper nickel. Maybe a little bit between magnesium. So it's mostly aluminum. Look at that. One more time. There's the aluminum. There's the penny. Never would have guessed. There's this is copper, so it's not copper. So uh, if I were you, I wouldn't melt down, melt down all your pennies and try to take it to sell it as copper. I'm not going to get much money. Okay. All right. So here's one other sample, and this is sample A, and this looks like brass to me. Okay. Okay. So there's the signal. Here's copper nickel here's magnesium there's aluminum and again it's got a lot of aluminum in it T6 okay and here is the coin the dime and it looks a little bit different here is T6 here's 7075 so I don't know what this uh, is in a dime but it's uh, not any of these materials so I can tell you it's not exactly any material okay now we're going to switch our uh, system and we're going to go to looking at cracks okay 